Hey guys, Michael from Copper vs Glass and we are back in 2022 with some Android customization videos. Now this one's going to be all around Android customization with the Material U options and just in general theming as a whole. Now for me, I actually enjoy Android 12 and I like Material U and the theming options that it gives. However, I know that a ton of you guys out there, including some of my own family members, really do miss that pure black AMOLED display that we used to have. In your notification shade, it's now more of a sort of dark gray color and you don't have those pure blacks that you used to have. Or if you're more into the light theming option, you also don't have a pure white without it having a tint of another color in there. So today what we're gonna be doing is looking at an application called Repainter, which according to the application description, allows you to get back those deep blacks and those pure whites without having to root or do anything really technical with your device. So, let's take a look. So I'm gonna be doing this on my Google Pixel 5 and I'm still using the Pixel 5, but I may be upgrading very soon, so keep an eye on the channel to see exactly what's gonna happen around that. So once you've got over to the place, so you want to download the application called Repainter. Now, once you go into Repainter, you're just gonna click on Start, and then we've got two different options coming up, which again, I knew this from the Play Store advertisement itself. It does work better with root access, but if you don't have root, there is a way around it, and that's what we're gonna be looking at now. So as you can see also, after the January update, some customization is limited to only Pixel devices. Luckily, I've got a Pixel phone here. However, if you're using something from Samsung or another manufacturer, then you may have to look at the root options in regards to getting this application working. So we just click on Next. And it does ask us to install another application and I'm gonna call it Shizuki. And again, click install, it's gonna take us over to the Play Store. Now, basically what this application does is it kind of works in the background to allow certain features and functions that wouldn't normally be available on an Android device, but it doesn't necessarily go as far as rooting the device or kind of going too in depth in regards to what it does or doesn't change. So that's all installed. Let's head back, click on start, and it's gonna take us into the application. Now I have actually used this app before, so I'm gonna kind of go over exactly how to pair your device to the service itself, which is actually quite simple to do. So all you need to do, we're gonna do it via starting with the wireless debugging options, and you wanna click on the pairing option. What it's then gonna ask you to do is go into your developer options, which if you need to know how to enable that, I will have a video linked down below with exactly a step-by-step -step of how to do that. And you wanna search for the wireless debugging option and then tap on pair device, and it's gonna bring up a code and we'll, we'll see it from there. So click on developer options, we'll search for wireless debugging, go down to the option, don't just toggle it on, you need to actually click into the option itself. Once you've turned it on, it gives you some information which I am gonna to have to blur, click allow, and then we're into the next portion here. Again, there will be some information on the screen that I can't show you guys in regards to my sensitive information, but it gives you an overview of exactly how to do what we need to do. So what you then just do is click on pair with pairing code, and then you're gonna see that this comes up here, three zero, and then again, enter pairing code. So we're gonna go for three, three, zero, eight, two, six. Click on send. And then as you can see down the bottom, for some reason it's got it in there twice, but the paired device is now done. Now what you actually want to do is go ahead and close the previous application, the Shizuki app. Go ahead and close that. And then when you go back into it, it's all gonna be pretty much done and ready to go. For some reason, this occasionally happens where the application force closes. Nothing to worry about, just go back in and then all you need to do is click on start. What it's then gonna do is it's basically going to pair your phone with the service to then allow you to use the Repainter application. Now, I know this may sound a little bit complicated, but I'm gonna do my best to explain it exactly as I need to. And I will also have some information linked down below on exactly the process that I'm doing as well. Once you've done that, when you go back into the Repainter app, everything should then be up and running. So again, allow Repainter to access Shizuki, click allow anytime and you're done. You're in the application. You can start customizing and changing anything that you need to with regards to the theming options and the color options. So first off, what it's gonna do is it's gonna give me some colors from the wallpaper that I'm currently using. And again, if I just click on these, go through and change it, you can see how that's gonna be changing if I go into my application tray as well. Certain things will change once you click done or apply. Otherwise, you can kind of see how it's gonna look just by clicking on them as you go through. You can see the background slightly goes blue with this one, for example, as more slightly a red orangey hue with this one here. But you can also then go into the custom options as well to kind of allow deeper integration. So again, if you go and pick custom color, you can go through and basically just pick any color that you want, click on select, and then it's gonna change it to that and do its best to use the theming options of Android 12 and Material U to bring that color to the forefront. So for me, I do like this blue. It kind of reminds me of what we used to have with the older versions of Android. So I'm just gonna click on done. 
And then again, as you can see here, it's gonna go on checking status and theming is active. So I'm pretty sure if I now go into here, you can see that it has now changed. So when I went into it a second ago, this was a very vibrant bluey green color. It's now changed to the color that I want to use, as you can see. So we've got an overview here. These are the current themes that I'm currently using at the moment. Go into colors, go back to that color picker. Then you can also go into the setting options as well. Now the color side of things, advanced customization is not supported without root. So again, that's something that maybe did work before the January update. It won't work on all devices, including Pixel devices, it seems in this instance. Now you can also go and do back-end mode. I'm going to see exactly what this does. So again, it goes back into the Shizuki app, uh, application and that side of things. Wallpaper, daily life wallpaper. And actually, we can't do what I wanted to do. So we're going to colors, wallpaper, see extracted colors. Right, okay, not amazing. So the color, the advanced customization is not supported without root. Uh, didn't really expect that. So let's see what else we can do because I'm pretty sure if I go back into the Play Store and we head over to Repainter. I'm pretty sure it has. Let's have a quick look in the What's New section. Hmm. Repainter brings Android customization. Customize your theme without uh, with Repainter, but it doesn't mention anything about Root. Hmm. Okay, so I think a lot of stuff may have actually changed with this application because the menu that I'm trying to get to is this menu here, which is in settings, color. So actually, a little bit disappointing. I, I can't actually use it for the AMOLED black or the pure white that I wanted to use it for beforehand. Now, I've never really had this happen with the video. It's a bit of a fail, I guess, but I'm still gonna post the video to let you guys know about the application and what it can or can't do because I've seen a lot of stuff going around in regards to this application specifically and how it fixes material design. And actually it turns out that it doesn't do necessarily what it actually used to. Let's see if we turn off enable theming. Just goes back to the theme that I had before. I didn't know if that would activate a different menu. Yeah, we can't get into the color bit, which is, is where the majority of the customization comes in. So basically the Repainter app now allows you to use Material U in a slightly different way. So you can change the theming options without relying on your wallpaper specifically, where, okay, that is actually kind of good in regards to the customization side of things, because beforehand, unless you were using the wallpaper colors, you had four options and then the basic colors, whereas now you've actually got as many colors as you want to use in as many different ways as you want to use it. So I guess from that angle, it's pretty good. You're not stuck with a specific theming option or a specific set of colors, but it still doesn't bring back the AMOLED darkness or the, the, the pitch black that we you know used to have before, or even the pure white color. So I'm gonna have to do a little bit more digging in regards to seeing if there's any other applications out there that bring back the original look and feel of Android customization from Android 11 or earlier. And on a bit of a downer, that's actually gonna do it guys for this video. This was a really good example of me showing you an application, showing you how it works, and also coming across some of those hurdles that you guys may experience yourselves. So if you guys have any solutions for this, let me know in the comment section down below. And if you wanna see some more videos moving forward of me actually going through a customization experience with you guys, let me know by giving this video a thumbs up so I know that that's the kind of thing that you guys are into in the future. I'm Michael from Copper vs Glass. If you're not already subscribed, now's a great time to do so. I want you to hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to turn on notifications so you're notified any time I post a new video here on the channel. And I guess I'll catch you guys in the next one, which hopefully goes a little bit better.